Welcome to another Rail Fan Dan production. Enjoy this short intro. Take a journey with me along one of the Northwest's most scenic short-line railroads during the summer of 2023. June 25th. This is the Coos Bay Rail Line and we're starting off this production in Notai, Oregon. This first catch is a great one with CBR number 1909 leading a train west which is the only GP30 on the railroad. HLCX number 3847 is trailing and it's a GP38-2. This train is entirely loaded with chip cars and log loads, some unique loads found anywhere anymore in our modern era. Number 1909 is 60 years old at the time of this video, built in 1963. It's always a treat to catch leading and is definitely the most rare gem on the line in my opinion. The railroad serves two customers here, Swanson Brothers Lumber on the other side of the crossing and Sierra Pacific on this side of the crossing. A short trestle crosses Poodle Creek here. West of Notai here is the same train over a decent sized trestle navigating through a small canyon crossing Vaughn Road and Notai Creek. This trestle is slated to be fully replaced, which is honestly baffling to me. Quite the project to see on a short line railroad. Some of the pre-construction is visible here with a new road being put in down towards the bottom of the creek and some equipment above. There also used to be many more trees here which covered the whole trestle and basically made it impossible for any kind of view like this. They were cleared away for the construction project. June 20th, east of Penn, Oregon, we catch the GP30 again exiting the west portal of Tunnel 13, a seldom seen location on the line.
They actually crest a small grade just after the portal here, which created more of an exhaust show than I expected. Fine by me. June 15th, north of Lakeside, Oregon, we catch HLCX number 3847 leading a train north, exiting Tunnel 21 with the GP30 trailing. Now crossing a section of North Ten Mile Lake, there are many bridges like this over multiple lakes on the southwest end of the line. Some history about the Coos Bay Rail Line. It's a 134 mile railroad from Eugene, Oregon in the Willamette Valley to the port of Coos Bay on the coast and points a little farther south to Coquille, Oregon. It was completed in 1916 as the Coos Bay branch of the Southern Pacific Railroad between Eugene and Powers, Oregon. The Southern Pacific owned and operated the line until 1994 when it was sold to the Central Oregon and Pacific Railroad, or Corp, who saw a number of owners over the years. In 2007, the Corp shut down most of the Coos Bay line, ultimately due to excessive tunnel damage throughout multiple tunnels on the line. There are seven tunnels in total. 
In 2008, the Surface Transportation Board forced Corp to sell the line to the Port of Coos Bay and in 2011 the line was reopened again after extensive repairs. Many more repairs and upgrades have been made in the years since then. There is some big talk for the future of this railroad. The Port of Coos Bay is pushing hard for an intermodal project to ship containers 100% by rail from the port to Eugene. This is something I will believe when I see it, but if it does come to fruition, you can bet I will be back out here to document it as well. The same train again south of Reedsport, Oregon crossing Wind Creek. In the same area again, south of Reedsport, crossing Schofield Creek a number of times. Another south of Reedsport along Schofield Creek. Our same train now in Reedsport about to cross over the Umpqua River. Reedsport is home to one of a few swing span bridges on the line and one of only two in operating condition.
This portion of the line is normally ran during the evening and during the night, but in the summer months it is possible to capture more locations than normal in the light. This was the reason I chose to do this video in the summer. North of Reedsport now, our same train is running alongside the Smith River. The Coos Bay rail line is unique in the sense that they run empties and loads in both directions. Most center beam loads run north and east for exchange with the Union Pacific and Eugene, while chip and log loads run west and south for export out of the port of Coos Bay. Another area north of Reedsport, over a section of Tacknitch Lake, we find our same train again. The line crosses sections of this lake six different times, two of which are right here next to one another. Some signature scenes of the line here for sure. Now crossing the longest span over Tacknitch Lake and the third longest on the line. This was shot around 9.15 p.m. and required launching the drone from the other side of a hill behind the camera here along Highway 101. Simply put, this was quite a technically planned out flight.
There are not many captures of trains over this bridge at all. July 30th, again west of Notai, at the trestle in process of being replaced, with more progress evident as well as a giant crane now on site. That landing underneath the crane was specifically built just for it to be placed there. Our favorite GP30 is leading west once again over Notai Creek. I am pretty satisfied with how often I caught it leading trains. once again carrying chips and logs for export. I read that the trestle is supposed to be replaced by another that will be built next to it. I assume those supports we see along the creek are the beginnings of that. July 27th, west of Penn, Oregon, is HLCX number 3847 leading west with CBRL 2018, a GP38-2. Just on the other side of that curve is this clear cut which is pretty recent to my knowledge and made for a very good view. West of Walton, Oregon, HLCX 3847 keeps slowly rolling along. Crossing a neat little bridge over Wildcat Creek.
at Ousta, Oregon along a small pond off of Wildcat Creek. They then crossed the Sayusla River after emerging from the trees at Ousta. East of Swiss Home, Oregon, now 3847 cruises along the Sayusla River in a tunnel of trees and along Old Stagecoach Road. No, this was not from a vehicle, but still flying the drone very close to the road pacing our train. A little ways down the river, our same train crosses the Sayusla a couple of times very close together. This has been another section of the railroad where trains can only easily be captured during the long summer days under normal circumstances. On August 12th, east of Vanita, Oregon, is CBRL number 2018 leading a train east. They parallel and cross Warren Slough here as well as Highway 126.
They also parallel Fern Ridge Lake, which is very full here. This whole region here between Vanita and Eugene is covered in wildlife wetland areas. August 4th, west of Eugene, is our favorite GP30 again, now paired with HLCX number 3854 heading east into Eugene, but not before they do some switching at the Green Hill Reload site. This facility has grown a lot over the last few years. What was once just a single siding with no service is now multiple sidings and spurs where the railroad is loaded with both logs and ships for export out to the Port of Coos Bay. It appears they also have some kind of shipping of poles as well. I have lived in Eugene all of my life and currently live just a couple of miles from the Green Hill Reload. It's amazing to see what it has transformed into over the years. Currently, the Coos Bay Rail Line is leasing two HLCX units, which we have now seen both of. They were brought to the line in March of 2022 from Lakeview, Oregon, where they previously served on the Goose Lake Railway. They are adding some center beam loads to their train to take to interchange with the Union Pacific and Eugene. A trackmobile is also visible here which suggests the Green Hill Reload can do some of their own switching. crossing Amazon Creek here and one of the many bike paths of Eugene. If I tried real hard, I could probably fly the drone from my house to this spot. It is less than one mile as the crow flies. They will back the empty log and chip cars into the siding here to be loaded and continue with the center beams to Eugene. We are now along the Union Pacific Brooklyn subdivision in Eugene with our same train of full center beams shoving into the UP Eugene yard. 
The Corp Railroad Shop is also in view here to the left. It's an old Southern Pacific machine shop. The UP SD40 pair are being used for the Eugene Yard South Switcher job which can regularly be found here. It's very rare that I fly a drone over this yard, but I thought it would be a great addition for this production. August 18th, we are back on the Coos Bay Rail Line with our favorite GP30 heading west, just east of Vanita along Fern Ridge Lake again. This is a special train and one I am glad to have been lucky enough to catch. CBRL number 1909 and 2018 lead four more HLCX leaser units onto the line for the first time. They were just picked up from the UP Eugene yard earlier in the day. I had heard these units would be brought to the line some months ago and it was great to actually catch them being hauled in. It is also extremely rare to see so many units lashed up on a train all together on this line. It's normally a pair as we have seen in most of this video. Another shot of the new gaggle of leasers in Vanita. An old spur here in Vanita is obviously not in use anymore. Some of the rail is not aligned correctly. August 20th, just a couple of days later at no tie, after the weekend, we catch the same six unit train once again in the evening heading west. Only the two Coos Bay units were online. The four HLCX units are dead in tow and require attention once they reach Coos Bay before they can be operated.
A ground shot here featuring the GP30's nice P5 horn. West of Notai once again at the trestle to be replaced, our six units cross over what might be the last recording I capture of a train over this bridge. Even more progress on this project is evident from the last time we were here. East of Penn, our six-unit train passes through an opening where power lines cross. West of Penn now, the six unit concest rounds another curve we've previously seen as well as the big clear cut just afterward.
Right now is the height of summer wildfire season in the northwest, which you have heard me say already if you've seen my previous couple videos. It becomes clear here, or rather not clear, with the smoke in the air and the ominous red hue as the sun is setting. The red hue in the air truly is what it appears like. No special editing to the colors. Passing through Walton now and quickly losing the light on the 6 unit consist, the red smoky hue visible here as well when the sky is seen. It is odd that they are deciding to lease so many locomotives. They regularly only use four to six locomotives on the line at a time as far as I know, but with these four added they will have a total of 12 units. The only reason I can see that makes sense is for the potential intermodal traffic that the port is trying to gain, but even that is still a ways off. I guess time will tell. Now west of Walton over Wildcat Creek, very dark now and very impressed with how well the drone camera did in such low light. August 25th, approaching Reedsport just before dawn in the early morning heading south. One of the new leased units, HLCX number 1044, leads light power with number 3847 trailing. Once again crossing the Umpqua River and the Reedsport swing span. The Highway 101 bridge in the background also has a swing span section.
I then was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. The swing span bridge started to rotate and I flew back to capture the process. Never thought I would have the pleasure of witnessing this. If it isn't obvious, the purpose of a swing span is to allow large ships to pass the other side of the bridge when they are definitely too big to fit underneath it. I'm not sure exactly how old this one is, but definitely not new. Pretty neat it is still operating. I also captured the whole process from the ground but sped it up a lot for your convenience. The whole rotation took about 5 minutes. South of Reedsport again with the light power along Schofield Creek. Now north of Lakeside once again, over and along North 10 Mile Lake, they have just exited Tunnel 20. 
This was a tricky flight as I had to launch from somewhere distant, then just hover and wait for them to appear. I hovered for about 8 minutes here until they showed up and all the while watching the drone battery drain lower and lower. This train was actually a bit of a disappointment, only because I was expecting it to be exclusively a log train due to it being that way the night before. They instead dropped all the log loads at a siding along the line before reaching Reed's port. Too bad. Entering and then exiting Tunnel 21 here and coming into Lakeside. Cushman, Oregon on the Sayuslaw River later that same morning on my way back home to Eugene. There is a swing span here as well, but to my knowledge isn't in operating condition anymore. They appear to be doing maintenance of some sort here with a barge and large crane. If you look close, you can even see some sort of special rail car being used as well. There is no train here because they run this part of the line during the cover of darkness under normal circumstances, but this is my favorite bridge on the line which I wanted to give a look at for this video. The Cushman Bridge is the longest on the line and I actually have had the privilege of filming trains over it before in some previous videos from years ago.
I hope you enjoyed this production on the Coos Bay Rail Line, a railroad that so much makes me think of home.